thousand years before. If, if you can find, look, look, if then, you then, can then find, that's the word if, 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 if. so when the world is hypothetical, suppose you found it on the condition. Yeah. That, suppose you found. What would you then do? Okay. Would you then, suppose you found something called undescribed, yeah. which is scientifically wrong. Then you so are, tell, by all means, right to say this is scientific mistake. In the what, would you, what would you do then? Are you, what are I will you, do, I will look at. Look, what I will do, I will look at your evidence because this is what exactly I'm being doing. Okay, on the condition that again, no, 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 no. if I could change it. With these ones, I'll tell you. With these ones, with these ones, like I've been doing for many, many years, I look at the evidence and I will then make a judgment. Because oh, so far, the cumulative evidence of history in my history. That I have seen people make claims, debunking claims, and I see all of them fall apart. All of so my view is, even if I was able to produce something half credible, because you are told that the Quran is perfect, you refuse to accept it, notwithstanding the credibility of it. If you can prove the Quran with absolute credibility it's wrong, then you have proven it's wrong. But what I am telling you, this hypothetical example that you're giving is just a hope for you. Bring it on the table. This is precisely the reason we come here and speak as corner elsewhere on the internet, in our keyboards, discuss this with us. If you really have found that the Quran is totally wrong, then you've made your case. But why is it that people are failing? Why is it? Why is it people are failing to prove that point? When the Quran because is. Is there any point? No, is there any point? When because the, you're told the no, script is perfect. No, no. Why would we try and prove something that you've been told is perfect? What you need to understand is this Quran is saying, accepted. have you not considered the Quran with care? If it wasn't from God, then you will certainly find many discrepancies within it. So the Quran itself is giving a falsification test. It's amazing. The Quran itself is giving you a falsification test, just like any scientific um, uh, you know, hypothesis. If you can prove it wrong, then you're proving it wrong. But I'm saying, if this book wasn't from God, then you would find many discrepancies. So what we are asking is simply, you know, examine this book and say, where is the discrepancy? Where is this error? Where is this contradiction? People are doing this in internet, you'll see, and you'll see the most responses. If you go back and forth, back and forth, debunking and rebuttal, debunking and rebuttal, you'll see. I mean, oh, it's easy to find. There's, a, there's an argument that because the language, I mean, I've never read the Quran, but he gave me a bit there. The language is suitably vague and suitably loose. But actually, there are so many different interpretations of it. You will always be able to say, but the, when the Quran says God is one, you cannot twist it to say God is two in one or three in one. It's very clear. Because words, look, in a language, some words have a specific meaning. A son doesn't have the meaning of a daughter. Because that's the distinction we made already in our vocabulary. Likewise, in the Quran, there are many words which describe in such a way you cannot get a different interpretation. But there are many things, other things, which can be vague as the way that they describe. For example, um, do you not ponder on the camel, for example? No, no, wait, 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 wait. Do they not look and ponder on how the camel is created, right? So now, this statement, this statement is not directing to anything specific about the camel. It's a very vague statement. And why so? Because if you were to study, I mean, I just, give you an example of a camel. Right? Okay. 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 Ok
If I give you a dictionary, you know, 1,000 years old. Okay, go to that wording about. Well, let's look up some of the words. Yeah. Okay. Because you, you'll have words in there. I do a lot of crosswords. Camel can only have one in it. Whereas there'll be words in there. If you go to the dictionary or the source, it can have 30, 40, 50, 60 different meanings. Camel has one meaning. Yeah. So, so if I give you, yeah, let's have a look. If I give you the words, of the meanings of the words, somebody translates it into in, in, in embryology. <laughs> Whatever I give you about the signs of the embryology, you would not know about it. But I still have a look at the words. The words I can tell you, the words I use, Nutfa. Nutfa became Alaka. Alaka became Mutfa. Mutfa then changed to Idam. Idam was then told to Lahm. And then Khalqan Akhu, another. Well, we had to go through that many different generations to get to a meaning. These are stages within the human development. Oh, sorry, right. Yeah, you're the first step is called Nutfa. Nutfa is understood like in, in the way the Arabs describe, like if you have a, a bucket of water and you empty it, whatever amount of little drops it's remains. Like Eric Cantona. What is Eric Cantona? The, the whatever like little drops that remains is the Nutfa. Okay. If you what have a dribbling of drop, a drop, the concept of a drop, and we know scientifically that part, the first stage of human creation, the zygote, is like a drop. Even look at it like a drop. Okay? And it's so minute. When the Quran says, not from all, it says, like the quintessence of this fluid, the ejaculatory fluid that's emitted, that means only the quintessence, you know, a little part of it that's required for the human procreation. When was this translated? So when, when did, when did, that Arabic word, what was it for drop? What's the Arabic word for drop? I can give you a dictionary that no, mentioning no, no. this, you know, you know, a few hundred years ago. So when, when was it translated into English? English or the, or the version you read in the, in the mosque? So, 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 I mean, there's only one version. No, no, translation. There are more than 30 or 40 English translations, probably more. But is the word, that word is the same in each of them? No, no. The word that are translated is translated like a square and drop. My point is, when was that translated to mean the word drop? What was it? Was it 19th century, 18th century, 20th century? I don't, I don't know in English. My point um, being, that if it was translated 1400 years ago, and they chose the word drop. If it was, but if, if it, the meaning was given 500 years ago with the meaning of drop, yeah. then would you say this is a, a, a retrofit meaning? Or is it a meaning it's a nice possibility? Yes, yeah, so exactly. Possibility. So this is exactly what we're saying. The word alaqa in Arabic language dictionaries like Qabus al muhid Lisan al Arab, Taj al Arus. I'm just giving you the names no, of the famous dictionaries. Okay, yeah. And they describe this, this is what it means. So they say it means like an insect in the water that sucks blood. Okay? It's called a leech. In the ordinary language, they use it for leech. The root word for this is something that is called something that is clinging. That's why my brother mentioned about clinging this early on. Because when we say we have relationship, because we cling to each other, in Arabic it's called alaqat, from alaqa, the word alaqa. Something that you hang, like a, a, a lamp or something, is called mu'allaq, coming from alaq. So you can see the word is used within this original meaning of the word. So this leech is also clinging to the mother's, you know, um, uh, internal wall, the placenta eventually, to suck the nutrition. Okay? And the other meaning is like a leech. It looks like a leech. This is the picture I was going to show you, but you know you can you can see today, 18 to 20 day embryo. At day 22, the embryo looks like a leech. Maybe it's not a leech we're talking about. If you open up the embryo, and if you open up the leech, if you, if you look at the leech um, and open it up, you will see the the somites, you know, the structure and how they resemble each other. So internal and external, it looks like a leech. It functions like a leech as well. So as the leech hangs on your skin and sucks the blood, so does the human embryo. So the Quran is using a general term to describe a stage of a human development which are accurate in its morphology and function. <laughs> Description and function. And using a term which is not scientific. Like imagine the Quran says, oh, this is a modular. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, so the Quran I'm is using it. words, using yeah, words. Semantics and word salad. Yeah. So the Quran is using words. The Quran to, to zygotes, embryos, leeches. You're getting lost. You started on a very clear point. Now we're Where talking about some representation, some metaphorical representation. Not metaphorical. Literal. You said it was I am saying. I am saying. 
What if the Quran is this word, the embryo, one stage of the embryo looks small as umbrella he brings? That's not only it. That's not only it. I'm saying it's better than it. It's better than it. So we're discussing? You asked me. You asked me. When you perhaps, 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 um, you came in. My friend, do you find you just switch off? The friend here, the friend here, the friend here asked. Let us begin to work. No, no, just keep talking, talking, talking. Did you not ask me? Did you not ask me? Can you tell him? Did you not ask me? What are the words used? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a when it says, oh, it's taking far too long to get to a very simple yeah, point. You guys, you, guys are arguing about it. you guys are arguing about a concept. And we've had it 20 minutes ago already. Right? I find that you are disagreeing for the sake of I'm not disagreeing. I'm, I'm completely objective. Okay. I am, I'm not okay. one way or the other. Okay, let's, let's generalize it. I'm what, just hearing noise. What, 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 what do you think the source of the Quranic word? I have no idea. Why would I know? No idea. The Quran says it's from God. Right. Assuming there's a God. Yeah. Right. Assuming there's a God. So why do you assume there is no God? I don't assume either way. Okay. I'm so completely objective. Unlike you. Completely objective. So you're open to anything. Like this is a creator. Absolutely. Okay. So what evidence would satisfy you and convince you that there is a creator? There is a one, sorry. The creator or in Well, I'd have to see it with my eyes, I'd have to feel it, I'd have to experience it. So if you see it... I will not base it on faith or, book, billion or, or, words. or billions of other people telling me that it's true. Yeah. So, if you, so if you see someone says, I'm God, and you touch them and feel them and experience them, do you believe that this is God? Yeah, I believe what I see. Yeah. So if somebody comes along and says... Evidence. No, if somebody comes along and says, I'm God, and you see them, in whatever shape, or like a human being, or something else, do you believe it's God? No, because many people have done that in the past, haven't they? <laughs> Lots of prophets. No, no, look at what you just said. I asked you what evidence would convince you. And you gave me a kind of evidence. The evidence, and I said, okay, suppose that evidence... Nice mate. Cheers. <laughs> and I said, suppose that evidence is given to you. Someone comes along, something comes along and says, I am God. Okay. You can see and you can feel and you can touch. And now you're saying, I won't believe. That means what you're asking for initially wasn't quite right. Okay, so that's a question I've never considered before. Okay. That was my initial answer. My answer's not good enough. I don't know what I need. Clearly, if someone just came, this guy came and told me he's God, and I'd say, oh, I can feel him, like I said, I can experience him, he can tell me, but then I don't believe him. Mm. So obviously I need more. I don't know yeah. what I need. So then my answer is I don't know. Yeah, but um, isn't there a way of knowing this? We can explore how can we know. There are various sources of knowledge, right? Yeah. Do you think science is the only source of knowledge? Or there are more no. Than there are other, other avenues besides science. So, this universe, do you think it's more rational to believe it always existed without being coming into existence? Look, or I'm not a big fan of the Big Bang either. But I'm definitely not a fan of creation, creationism. I'm not a fan of it appearing out of nowhere. I don't know what to think. Yeah. So this it's universe far beyond can my exist. capability to understand. So suppose now we can I really the that makes it left out. We can't give you the left out. Suppose yeah. you're outside the umbrella, but that's yeah. somewhere. Okay. See how the argument goes. <laughs> if you and I exist, can there be a point in the past where there was absolute nothingness? Could there have been nothing? Absolute nothingness. Yeah. Cash your umbrella. Can absolute nothingness make something? Cash your nothingness. Yeah, hey, I just said. I don't know. All, all this Big Bang stuff. No, this is not Big Bang stuff. This is about. Can something appear This is about nothing? reasoning. What the hell is that? The reality with the tools that we have. So you have the tools yeah. of the reason. From my, from my, from, uh, from a very basic rational standpoint, can something appear from nothing? Right. So the universe obviously could not have come from a yeah. yeah. So that means the universe either always existed because it cannot come from nothingness, or something that brought the universe into existence always existed. Because at one point, you cannot come from nothingness. But then, that, but then you're, you're starting from the beginning. How can something just be? I'm just saying the possibilities nothing are the possibilities are because nothing cannot make something and we are something. 
two options. Either us, we always existed, so the question of coming into existence doesn't apply. Yeah? Because there was no nothing, we were always there. Or something brought us into existence which was always there. Yeah, so that's where I have trouble. I, I, I can't see how you can explore. Can be there. You can explore. No, no, it's not about having trouble. These are the only rational choices. Because you're a rational human being, you cannot have a choice of your Nothing can be the cause of something. Because nothing itself has no energy. It doesn't exist. It has no energy to make something. So our universe, you and I exist. So at one point in the past, there cannot be absolute nothingness. That means there has to be always something. Always something. Right. So either our universe was always there, or something or someone that brought this universe into existence was always there. So ultimately, there has to be a cause which is always there. What if Either it's, it's the universe what's, itself. What's your theory? What's your theory? What's your I, don't, theory? I have a theory. You don't. So I need to be condescended. Oh, no, no, no. What's your So if you're saying there's one, there could be nothing, which I accept. So I'm saying it so cannot be nothing. nothing. Or it can be something. No, we are saying, rationally speaking, there cannot be nothing. That's what we agree on. Yeah, but you're saying, you're, well, you're positing that there's... The thing that's always been there is obviously your God, your God, right? Is it? I think I'm, I have made a little bit clear. When we say it cannot be nothing at one point, yes. then it means by the logical extension. There was always something. Okay, so if you're always something is, there has to always be explicit. What is that? No, there has to be always something. Right, so I'm going to say, whatever your always something is, so you won't tell me what it is. I'm assuming it's God. No, no, I'm not. Is it God? I'm not rejecting that I'm not going to tell you. What I'm saying is, in principle, what we can agree is that there has to be always something. Right, so what that something is, is the matter of discussion. Right, so if you let me finish, the something could have been a single cell organism that started all of this. One possibility? If that's one theory that you believe in, yeah. evolution. No, no, if you want to bring that as a possibility, that's one possibility. So that could be the thing that always existed. So there could be a god that always existed, or there could be a single cell organism that always existed. And it could be nothing. Yes. Let's say no, 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 there cannot be nothing. We already agree that okay, there's, okay, there's two things there. There's a god or a single cell organism? Either of them could have brought all this together. To, to sure, sure. So now let's analyze each possibility in turn for their own merit and see which one is more rational. Right. Right? A single cell organism. Do you think the single cell organism has the, the knowledge to bring about this universe and the energy and the power? Of course not, but that's, the, that's what evolution is. It starts and then by a process of random mutations. But that single cell, if it was first, whatever that single cell is, you would know the single cell does not have the capability or the capacity to, to bring about the universe, to bring about planet Jupiter, for example. Right. Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't have an agenda. It doesn't have. It's not an agenda. Process. It doesn't have the ability. Or the ability. Ability. Yeah. So that means that option doesn't seem to be very rational. So you're left up with other option, which is God, the Creator. Which is rational. Isn't there? Is that another option? Because I, you are, we are postulating. They're both remember. implausible. No, we are we are postulating a rational alternatives because it cannot be nothing. It has to be something. No, something could be a single cell organism, or something could be the creator originator of this universe. I agree, they're both irrational. They're both No, 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 you can't say both irrational. We have only examined one, which is the single cell organism. And we said this is irrational. Let's examine the second alternative. The originator of the universe. Now, what are we giving? What are we saying the originator of the universe is? So we are saying, as believers or theists, that the originator is the possessor of energy. Absolute entity that existed always, having power and will. Now that I can say makes sense, because if you don't have energy, you cannot think about anything. You need energy to do actions. So yes, it makes sense that this originator of our universe has energy. I disagree. I'm, I have no agenda here. Right? So I, without I, energy... Like I said before, I'm, I'm objective, right? It's what you're saying to me. You're, you're, you're just saying it, and it has energy, and therefore it no, I'm is. not saying it has. I'm that saying can, honestly, it that, needs that to. Can, that's, can, that's confusing. I'm, Okay. I'm, I'm trying I'm, to understand. I'm saying, saying let I'm us lost. now let I'm us lost. now let us identify <laughs> and describe as much as we can with our intellect, with our rationality, what the other alternative is. So this this thing, the second alternative, the originator, this thing always existed. If it always existed, it existed with its own attributes and qualities. Not given by anything else, because it exists always. You cannot give an attribute to something that exists always. It is not deficient in this attribute, whatever it has. 
These are, these are inherent attributes. If something exists always, without a beginning, you can't give it knowledge, you can't give it energy, you can't give it power, because whatever it has, it has it inherent always. That's where, that's where my, I can't get it. Okay, okay. Do you see energy in this universe? Oh, yes. Oh, I see. Energy. In our universe, or in matter, in, 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 in the energies that we use. Yeah, that's where that's my understanding of energy is. Being, there are there's, energies. Yeah, there's energy everywhere. There's energy everywhere. Right. So that energy obviously didn't come from nothing. So that energy has to be always present. Yeah. There you go. So that originator possesses energy that was always there. That's a rational conclusion. It's not rational. Come on. It's yeah, rational. exactly. That's, that's, no, no. that's a theory. No, no. It is not only rational, but it is scientific and, and, and simple physics. This is what the lady said. I'm not going to get into a conversation about physics, because I got 16% physics at high school, right? <laughs> but I wasn't listening. <laughs> um, yeah, but look, you're a physicist or some sort of scientist? Right, so I actually yeah. so but not a physicist. No, no. Right, so it's very different. But, you know, you've got all these incredibly smart people doing things with the boson Higgs and trying to trying to create another a more big another big bang and all the rest of it. It's far over my head, right? But these guys, because they spend their whole life thinking about this stuff, they believe that you can create energy from nothing, right? No, 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 no. no I'm saying the, one of the one of the paradigms of our physics is this, we can't create energy, we can't destroy energy. Energy just transforms just from one to the other, right? We can't do that. This is one of the big fundamentals of science. So, so, this, so since we know that energy exists, the alternative number two, which is the originator of the universe, as an explanation for our universe, possesses energy or has energy which has no beginning. Always there. It's only rational and reasonable to question it. Because otherwise you'd say you have to admit energy was created. No, but you could say energy was just there and it's not. When you say just there, just always there. Right? So we are saying we are saying because the first alternative of a single cellular organism didn't have that, the other alternative has the energy always there, meaning always there with no beginning. But that, but that doesn't mean it's some sort of divine... Yeah. I'm not saying it's divine, but at least you're, you're jumping the gun, jumping ahead. I'm not, I'm genuinely confused. No, no, what you have so far understood in this, that this alternative, cause of our universe, possesses energy which was always there. This is what I'm saying. Right, and so this is what you're agreeing to. Okay, so we agree on that. Right. So then, your so next, now, where's next, the next few steps next, that takes next, us to next that step is, is, Next step is, does this energy possess consciousness or a will? It's something that we can look at the universe and also come to a rational conclusion. And what is that rational conclusion? Okay, let me give you an example. Um, okay, let me give you an example of a cosmic kitchen. A kitchen somewhere in our cosmos, fully equipped with a refrigerator, with a cooker, you know, cupboards full of sugars, teas, teapots, cups, the sink with water and water supply, the fridge with milk, right? All of that. Now, if I were to ask you, having all of this in place, in this cosmic kitchen, do you drink your coffee? Coffee. Coffee. Coffee then. Do you think a good cup of coffee with the amount of sugar, you use sugar? No sugar. No sugar, no milk. No sugar, no milk. Yeah? But coffee alone with the right, with the right proportion, right? With the right beans will be produced and ready for you in the cup if there was no willing agent to make it. In that cosmic kitchen. It's just out there. And all the ingredients there, would a coffee, a cup of coffee, uh, or, 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 or a mug of coffee have ever be made? In a magical kitchen, in, in a, a cosmic magical kitchen, land, in a, will my perfect no, cup of coffee no, be there? No, no, in a cosmic kitchen where there's no magic. <laughs> okay, where cosmic, is, sorry. Cosmic means somewhere in our cosmos, somewhere in our universe, yeah. somewhere out there. In the infinite. 
the university is technical. It's another discussion. One of our universities, somewhere along within you the. You love university. technicalities when it suits you, but you love semantics no, when, no, it, when no, it suits no, no. you as well. Just, just to simplify. A kitchen, a right? kitchen, so a kitchen somewhere out there, right? Can it, well, he didn't say that. Can it make itself? Yes. Yes. A cup of coffee in any kitchen can it make itself. Thank you. You bamboozle people and then it doesn't make sense. No, no, right. no. So can, is there a magic cup of coffee that just sits there? Will it make, will it make itself? I'm not asking for magic. Right. 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 Why not? When you have all the energy and ingredients and everything right. there yeah. to process things, why doesn't this process happen? Because you need a an agent <laughs> with a will to make it happen. This universe to come with this diversity and complexity and unity of the things that we see within our universe. For it to happen and manifest, you need an agent, a willing agent, who is conscious and who has a will to bring this about. Me. Hmm? Me. Going into the kitchen, I'll be the grand Yeah, yeah. In your case, you, 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 you a, an agent with a consciousness and a will to bring this together to make it. So this universe is course that we're looking for. That course, what I am saying is, needs to be something that is conscious and has a will that brought about this universe. Otherwise, the universe will not proceed. It will just be there as it is. It will remain whatever it was, you know. But the thing is, things are, have changed. Creation has taken place, or the universe has come into existence with its complicity and harmony. We know that this will has been in action already. This is why the Quran describes he's the originator of the heaven and the earth. When he wills something, it happens. The Quran affirms a will of this originator and calls him the originator of the universe. Yeah. I believe it takes many, many, many leaps to go from will and intent to saying that that's a creator. It just, it just doesn't make sense. Like, I think you, if you, so you're clearly very into this, you've thought this through a lot. I've stumbled through, listened to a few words, and said, hey, this is what I think. What you're saying, <coughs> pardon me, when you talk about logic and you talk about things that there's a linear process, goes from A to Z, you go through BC, etc. And, and that makes sense. Now, I, like I said to you before, I'm not here with any agenda. You could, you could persuade me, whoever else could persuade me, the other guy over there preaching about whoever, whatever, I'm just sort of here. But, and I'm completely open minded. But what does it make sense? What hasn't made sense so far? You, you seem to jump. You say, well, if in the cosmic kitchen, you have the ingredients, the coffee can't make itself, and then you, and then you jump forward many steps, or sideways or backwards or goodness where, and you say, well, you don't say it necessarily, but you imply it. Perhaps, perhaps I need to and make that, it clear. It's, yeah, what it's I'm not saying clear is, for me. once we affirm there was eternal energy, which was in existence, which had no beginning, then how did the universe proceed from this energy? Is the question. Whether it happened for intent or it just happened as it is, nothing. I'm saying, if you have all the ingredients, like all the energies in place, thermal energy, chemical energy, material energy, it doesn't come together to form these kind of things that I've given an example of. Okay? You need a conscious agent to bring this together, to bring this about. If our universe did not have a conscious agent as a cause, the universe would not proceed as it is right now. This is the logical extension that I'm following from the example of, of, of a cosmic kitchen or an ordinary kitchen. It's my kitchen and your kitchen, right? Any kitchen. Because the coffee cannot make itself, demonstrating that this thing requires an intent, a being or an agent, rather, who intends things to happen. The universe, if it was always in existence in energy, to manifest in its current form would never happen. 
unless there was an intent process going through with a conscious agent. That is what I'm saying. This is a logical argument. I'm not giving you a scientific evidence for it. This is just a reasoning with you, giving my rational understanding of how we can explain our universe. As a rational human being, you'll realize that this makes sense because if it wasn't the case with intent and, and consciousness, then it would be like your kitchen. It would just remain forever and forever. No coffee would ever make itself. The universe with this harmony and this precision and design, people often somehow have a shock when we talk about design, as if the universe is not designed. The universe shows design to very minute detail. The constants of our universe are like accurate to 20 second decimal places. This is how accurate we're talking about the precision of design. So when we are talking about the universe, we are saying it's reasonable to assert and conclude and rational to assert and conclude there was a designer, there was an agent with intention, will and energy that brought about this universe. You're going to say something? Sorry, I was just going to say... Papa's no, that's fine. Okay, I'll, I'll hide you. Um, so, I was just thinking, so basically, we need a creator to have a creation. All of this, the specificity of everything cannot come about randomly. That's basically what he's trying to say. As human beings, there's animals, there's many types of animals. There's so many types of insects and birds and trees. And everything feeds differently. Everything survives differently. Could that have happened by random? Who is it? Yeah, I, I agree. So, uh, we, we agree on a lot, but then we disagree on the, on the con conclusion. Okay. So, why, why the, the, the happy accident or a random accident or a random mutation? Random accident. There's one too many random accidents. So, for all of this about, so you, you know, said the you want to prove, you wanted to see about. something, you want oh, to yeah. feel it, you want to experience it. Yeah. You can feel this, you can experience this. This is all there, you could not have come by. Last week, I was thinking we were in, I came with a jacket. So we are thinking with a jacket or... So that, okay, so we can, we, let's say no, we have a jacket today. for the sake of discussion. Okay, sure. yes. That doesn't mean that... No, I know you're going to go back to all these energy stuff. That doesn't, that, yeah. that doesn't mean that there's someone with energy and intent and so on and so forth that made it so. Mm -hmm. that, there's, that's, that's we're that's only right. considering two potential... Causes, let's say. It could be 50, it could be 500,000, who knows? But ultimately, out of these millions and zillions of causes, there has to be a cause prior to which there is no cause. Because we agreed there cannot be nothing as an alternative. So there is always something. Either this something is a millions of intermediate steps, like one God creating one creator, creating another creator, which creates another creator that creates the universe, or ultimately there is one cause which is the source of everything. Okay? You can you know, talk about billions in between, but ultimately you have to deal with the first cause. Yeah, but then everything. you can start, like, where did the first cause come from? No, the first cause, no, 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 the first cause doesn't come from anywhere. The first cause has to be always there. This is what you concluded. Because nothingness, absolute nothingness is not an option, Somewhere. then something has to be existing only. And that something is your cause, which is the first cause, prior to which there is no other cause. This is the rational conclusion that you accept to the world. Because there is no other alternative. And there has to be something always. That something is the cause of our universe. Whether this cause is a random accident, which cannot explain the complexity and, and the you know, precision of our universe, or it was the cause which is intelligent, the cause which possesses a will, the cause which intended this universe to happen. So as Muslim, I'm not sure what religion you are, as Muslims, we are saying, we are saying... Surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah, as, yeah, as Muslims, what we are saying is, it's, it's not just Islamizing things, it's rationalizing the reality, our existence. So when you look at our reality, you will come to this conclusion. When we say, oh, God is Allah, people often have like, what do you mean Allah? But I've used so far the terms originator and creator. And this is precisely what, precisely what Allah, who names himself for us to relate to him, 
saying these are my names or attributes. I am the creator. Khaliq in Arabic. I am the originator. Badir. Badir al Samawati wa the originator of the heavenly energy, which rationally will accept. So when you look at he says, okay, I am the one and only. The independent, the absolute. All of this you will accept rationally. And this is how the Quran describes this entity which is unknown to you. But who is this? What is this? And the Quran says, you know what? He is the originator of the universe. He is the originator of the heavens and the earth. The one who is absolute. The one who is all hearing and all seeing. So now describes you other characteristics which you can then relate to. Oh, this is a personal agent. The agent that creates and can be related to. The creator, the originator, you can relate and you can communicate. Because if you can communicate and understand each other, obviously you shouldn't have any difficulty in understanding that the creator also can communicate with the creation. The creator says, okay, I have created you for a purpose. And this is the purpose. I created you and this is what's going to happen to you in the future. And this is how the universe was created, this is how the universe is going to come to an end, and so on and so forth. So this information, the creator has given us as guidance. Because we could be left alone and our intellectual speculation and we end up with so many divergent theories and we don't know what the reality is. But the Creator has spared us this intellectual speculation <laughs> and calling this trial and error not knowing the truth by sending prophets and messengers, meaning what? Raising up human beings from among ourselves and choosing them to be a guide for us, giving them enough evidence for them to be guide. For example, if she was a doctor and you knew that she never went to medical school, she never performed any surgery, in fact, she, her hand shakes, I'm not saying that she was, right? And you go to her surgery and you want a heart operation, you will say, Salama, thank you, sorry, I'm, I'm not interested, right? Because you will be concerned about your life. But if you knew, she studied in the world-class institution, in medical school. She got so many medals in exams and, and, and all the surgeries that things we have. She has done life surgery in the internet and people have seen it. And, you know, talking, we're talking about latest technology. And if she offered you a heart surgery, I would go to her, you would go to her. I don't think she likes me. I don't want no, no, her working no, no, on my heart. No, 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 I would go to her. To perform my heart operation and you go to her because you know she's an expert, she's reliable, she's trustworthy and she knows what she's doing. So when we talk about these guides and prophets and messengers, they were taught and they were instructed and modeled by this creator as the best person upright, the most honest person, trustworthy person who you can look up to. So they are the upright character. So when when they came and said, God has given us a message to tell you, you automatically know this man has never lied. In fact, as Muslims, the prophet that we are talking about, the guide, is called Muhammad. His name is the, the, the praiseworthy one, the one who is praised, praiseworthy and the one who is praised. He was known among his community as Sadiq al Amin, the one who is truthful and trustworthy. Why? Because he always spoke the truth and this was his hallmark among his community. The one who is always reliable. His people will leave positions with him because that's trustworthy he is. Even his enemies, when they became enemy later on, they will still leave their position with him because he will guard it with safety and security. Yeah? So we are talking about an individual when he came and said, okay, I am a messenger of God to tell you that God is one and has given you this book to tell you that you should abandon the worship of your false deities which you make with your own hands or you worship your own self as your creator like you make up your own religion, your own desires, your God. There's no way of this because you are created for a purpose. So, of course, a lot of people didn't need any proof and evidence to just believe. But others said, what, how can I believe in something? You know, revelation came to you from seven heavens, above the heavens and so on. So this revelation, this message that he brought, which is the Quran, itself was an evidence to them. And this is one example, the discussion that you came in, a brother of mine earlier on was alluding to, just mere illusion. That look, Quran talks about a natural phenomena of a human development from the very early stages in the womb of the mother. And the way the Quran describes is astonishing. This knowledge 1400 years ago when the Quran was uh, given to the Prophet, 
to the people. The knowledge at that time wasn't like, in fact, they had erroneous understanding before. And then, then and even afterwards as well. Much, much later, we came to a more accurate version of the history of the embryology of human creation within the, or human development within the womb of the mother. So this was one example to illustrate that the Quran gives us information which we should reflect on so that you can see where who the author is. Because the Quran says if this is not from the Quran, not from God, then who is it from? What is it from? You can analyze it. Look, the Quran is either a product of the Prophet himself, his people, it's a product of some you know spiritual entities like demons and satans whatever people postulate or it's from god as it says you can analyze each of these possibilities and see which has more mer merit pressure the quran says whenever you read this book seek refuge with god from the accursed satan satan is the most avowed enemy don't follow the footsteps of satan obviously a book written by satan is not going to say you know take me as an enemy and don't listen to me but be good be nice be kind avoid falsehood avoid oppression avoid all those bad things you say it doesn't look like the handy works of satan is it the work of the prophet himself now i'm just giving you some things to reflect on right if it was the prophet himself then you'd see that it reflects the prophet you'd say something about because you'd say it's an imposter because someone saying it's from God, but actually he's concocting and fabricating a scripture by himself and pass it on as a scripture. This is an imposter in this alternative. So this imposter should say something about to prove his point, right? He should say like, you know, all things good things about him. But the Quran reprimands him. How did you turn around, you know, Abbas Tawalla, you know, you turned and frowned. That blind man that came. He's reprimanded, he's rebuked, and he's often said, okay, no, if God were to, if you were to say, invent something about God, and God would require it of you, he would cut off your jugular artery, if he says something of your own. So, you would expect something, to say something good about him all the time, but the Quran says, okay, he, to him, to the Prophet, seek refuge with God, ask forgiveness, ask forgiveness. Tim. 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 Nice I've got lots you. of things to ponder. Please do. Fairly and um, we perhaps we really talk man. again. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I'm here quite often, so... Yeah. What's your name? Mansoor. Sorry? Mansoor. Mansoor. Okay, it's been Lovely a pleasure to speaking you, to you. And we talk again Thank and... You. you know, in the meantime... In the What's meantime, your name? Dr. Dina. Yeah. In the meantime, if you have the opportunity or make opportunity to read the Quran, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then we can yeah. have a basis for yeah, discussion yeah, yeah. next yeah, man. time. Look, I, I just come in yeah, here and there, made a flipping comment. You're clearly more into this than I am, I, I, I really am trying to understand, given the context of the world and your religion and the divisions within it and people like me who are confused, I don't know, and then that's it, that's it. But at least we try to remove some of this confusion from you. <laughs> you need to boil it down, I reckon. Sure, I really, sure, I really sure. think you need to trim the fat for people yeah. like me. So at least go, what we've done boom, today, boom, boom. what we've done today, Tim, we've talked about the reasons why we believe in the existence of the Creator, giving you our reasons from the natural world. So it is not because our Quran says so, it's because when we examine this world, this is where we can come to this conclusion. And I just shared you some of these reasons why, even rationally, without resorting to the book, one can arrive to this conclusion. In the next meeting, perhaps, when we talk, we can talk more about the book, illustrating and proving and, and demonstrating to you why this is indeed from this Creator that we are rationally coming to accept. Awesome. I look forward okay. to it. Next All the best. Sunday. See yep. you, Take care. Cheers, chaps. Uh, so what's the pay before you go? Oh, shit, man. Sorry. <laughs>